Use this textbook passage to answer the next six questions. As usual, begin with reading the first question to help focus and engage with the passage. Here's the first question again. The author says Stalin was more successful because his ideological message was more compelling. She also does not entirely concur that he was a traditionalist. She points out that his ideological message was so strong and he wanted a rapid cultural change towards socialism. Answer A is not correct. The influence that a modern worldview might have on one's opinion of Stalin is never mentioned. Answer B is not correct. She does agree that he reverted the country to some traditional values, the means, but she says he did so in order to progress the country further into socialism, the goal. Answer C is correct. She doesn't entirely agree with their viewpoint, so answer D is not correct. She doesn't completely refute the idea that he was a traditionalist, so answer E is not correct. The correct answer to question one is C. The passage discusses both sides of the issue, and the author doesn't completely refute the idea that Stalin was a traditionalist. In addition, this answer omits the second paragraph entirely. Answer A is not correct. The debate is not left open to the reader's opinion. The author makes clear at the end of the passage that Stalin should be considered a progressive, and she describes him as having fervor to advance socialism. Answer B is not correct. The issues that are compared are women's rights and the drive of the two men in advancing socialism. The author does not say which of the approaches the men took to these issues that she prefers. She says Stalin was more successful in effecting revolution change, but that is not the same as saying she preferred his approach. Answer C is not correct. The passage discusses two theories on Stalin. This answer omits a lot of what the passage discusses. Answer D is not correct. The point of contention is whether Stalin was a traditionalist or a progressive. The author talks about the evidence for both views, and she concludes by indicating that he was a progressive. Answer E is correct. Correct answer to question two is E. Now let's take a look at question three. This answer is supported by the phrase, he rose to power uncontested by expanding the authority of his position. This implies that Stalin simply made himself Lenin's successor and no one stopped him. Answer A is correct. Although Lenin wanted absolute cultural revolution, there's nothing in the passage mentioned about the destruction of physical artifacts from the monarchy. Answer B is not correct. Allowing divorce in order to change a culture and one's own feelings about the morality of it are different. Morality is not mentioned in the text, so answer C is not correct. The correct answer to question three is A. Let's take a look at the textbook passage. Although this sentence explains a major difference between Lenin and Stalin, the rights they gave to women, it also explains what they had in common, a desire for the people to be loyal to the state. The passage that the same is true of Stalin is here. On to question number five. The passage explains how Stalin became the head of state, but it never mentions how Lenin did so. Answer A is correct. Lenin promoted gender equality and Stalin glorified women and promised to take care of them. Answer B is not correct. Lenin advocated gradual change and Stalin was frustrated at the slow progress. Answer C is not correct. This is discussed in the last sentence, which says that Lenin could never have achieved consolidating the means of production as Stalin did. Answer D is not correct. This is discussed in the last paragraph, which says that Stalin's ideological message was far more compelling than Lenin's. The passage also discusses the people's hesitance to accept Lenin's changes and the collective mentality that Stalin was able to create. Answer E is not correct. Correct answer to question five is A. Finally, let's take a look at question number six. 
The passage gives Stalin's compelling ideological message as the reason that people were willing to buy into the collective mentality. So answer A is not correct. This answer is correct because it reflects the author's main idea that letting the people regain their traditional values was just a tool. The intended effect was massive cultural change. Answer B is correct. This answer is also supported because the passage says that Lenin was unequivocally revolutionary and he took great strides to transform the nation. No one could say he was a traditionalist. Answer C is correct. Correct answers to question 6 are B and C.